In this video, I'm gonna present the triangle rule of speed ups. This is a theory that I developed trying to win more points off of the speed up. And conclusion first, it works. Once you understand this rule, you'll hit better speed ups, better counters, and win more hands battles. The triangle rule states that the ball path of the speed up and the counter always form a triangle. The angle of which you can predict based on the shot from which the counter comes and the quality of the speed up. In this point, Dylan hits a speed up from the right side towards the middle, catching Ben in a forehand. Where do you think the next ball goes? If you guessed cross court towards J-Dub, you'd be right, but why? We'll explain that later on. First, let me explain why you should care about knowing this. When you hit a speed up, the likelihood that you win the point off the speed up is very low. More likely you start a hands battle. Whether or not you win the point depends on how good of a hands battle that you started. For example, in this pro game, there were 16 speed ups hit, and only one of them ended off of the speed up. Ben hit a winner. But at every other point, the ball came back. At higher levels of play, the speed up simply initiates a hands battle. And a good speed up gives you an initial advantage in that hands battle, making it more likely that you win the point. I learned this lesson the hard way around four or five. At this stage, I had just learned what a speed up was, and I was trying to incorporate it into my game. So anytime I saw an opportunity to hit one, I was speeding up the ball and just praying that the point would be over. I wasn't thinking about the shot I was hitting, the spot I was targeting, my opponent's tendencies, or where I was hitting it from or to on the court. So against weaker players, this would work sometimes because they just couldn't handle the surprise of a fastball coming at them. But once I started playing with better players, I would lose the point almost every time. Why? Because I was setting up hands battles that I was totally unprepared for. Over time, I improved my shot making abilities and started to win more points. But I only started winning points against pros once I could anticipate where their counter was going to go. And this is where the triangle rule comes in. If you understand the triangle rule, you can start hands battles where you have the advantage. Let's go back to our original example. Why does Ben hit the ball towards the middle? To predict this, you have to understand two concepts. The first concept is what shot is the counter being produced from? Is it a forehand, a backhand, or a two-handed backhand? By and large, a forehand is gonna go to the right of your opponent's body. A one-handed backhand is gonna go to the left of their body, and a two-handed backhand is gonna go to the right of their body. Why is this? Well, pick up a paddle, and then imagine you're being sped up on, and you're getting caught a little bit off guard and hitting it a little bit late. Where's that ball going? On the forehand, you're gonna be jammed up here, and you're gonna, the only option you're gonna have is to go out this way. Especially if the ball is coming in from this direction, you're gonna have a hard time redirecting that ball this way. So the forehand tends to go up. The player's right. On the backhand side, it's the opposite. If you catch it a little bit late here, you're going this way. But on the two-handed backhand, since the contact point is so far behind you, and you're pushing through with your left arm, usually a player's gonna be able to get it across their body and to the right. In that pro game, about 70% of speed up counter patterns follow the triangle rule. Here are a couple examples. In this first point, the speed ups hit on the far right down the line and the, the counter goes towards the middle because it's been hit to the countering player's forehand. So the shot is going to the countering player's right. In this example, the countering player is hitting a one-handed backhand for their counter, and so it's going towards the left of their body. Now, what about the 30% of times where it doesn't work? This brings us to the second concept, the quality of the speed up. You can only predict where the ball is going if your opponent doesn't have time to think about the speed up. You need to catch them off guard, and so they're just blindly punching at the ball. And this is the case most of the time in a hands battle. But if you don't successfully jam them up and they can anticipate your ball, then they can redirect the ball wherever they want. And that's exactly what happened here. The points where the triangle roll didn't hold, the counter was being hit from up high and had been anticipated well by the player countering that speed up. So if you hit a bad speed up, the triangle roll doesn't work. With these two concepts, what shot the countering player hits and how good is that initial speed up, we can start to apply the triangle roll. Let's try a couple. In this point, where do you think the counter goes? How about this one? So now that we have this information, what do we do with it? Well, our goal is to win the point. So by using the triangle rule, we want to set ourselves up for advantageous hands battles so our team has a good chance of winning the point. So think about the situations you find yourself in in games and see if there are any patterns that you can apply this to. For right side players, if you think about speeding up down the line against a right-handed player, they're either gonna hit a one-handed or two-handed backhand. If they hit a one-hander, 
it's gonna be difficult for them because their natural path is to the left of their body, but that's going out. If you're able to get them, you might get a good weak reply right back at you. If they have time, they get two hands on it, they might be able to come across you, so you have to be prepared for that. And if instead you speed up across their body to try to catch them in a chicken wing, you might expect the ball to come back middle. And so it would be reasonable to sit backhand and then slide middle to, to try to reply to their counter. For left side players, it's the same thing, but in reverse. And for mixed, you might want to play strategically, so you hit your speed ups to a spot where you have a better chance of getting to that next ball. So you don't set up your mixed partner for failure. Before understanding the triangle rule, I was somebody who was just speeding up blindly, rolling the dice, hoping that my opponent would make an error off of my speed up. Now I'm trying to set up smarter hands battles to put my team at an advantage so we have a better chance of winning the point. Try applying the triangle rule to your game and let me know how it goes. Share your theories and experiments in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, give me a like, share, and subscribe. It helps other great players like you find my stuff.